Hi everyone, I'm Brendan Doyle from the Oracle Analytics Product Strategy Team. And I'm excited to share a little bit about us and the power that Oracle Analytics can bring you. Our mission at Oracle is to help people see data in new ways, discover insights, and unlock endless possibilities. Oracle Analytics is a cloud-first analytics suite that's built with augmented analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning infused throughout the data and analytics workflow. Oracle Analytics is a complete platform with ready-to-use services for a wide variety of workloads and data, offering valuable, actionable insights from all types of data, in the cloud, on-premises, or in a hybrid deployment. Oracle Analytics empowers business users, data engineers, and data scientists to access and process relevant data, evaluate predictions, and make quick and accurate decisions. We're thrilled to share that Oracle was named a visionary in Gartner's latest report, being the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Analytics and BI platforms. We believe that augmented analytics transforms the data and analytics value chain by assisting people and accelerating the path to better insights and business impact. We believe that new personal interfaces break the barriers between people and data, enabling data literacy and dramatically increasing the value from that data. And we believe that businesses demand connected and continuous data and analytic services, and teams will move more rapidly from working on better looking dashboards to enabling intelligent decisions that drive action. Augmented Analytics was designed into Oracle Analytics Cloud from the start. This means that to get initial insights on a metric such as CO2 emissions, all I need to do is right click and select explain. We'll then instantly get descriptive analytics breaking down the metric by different dimensions and showing the key drivers that are influencing this metric. To do this range of analysis in the past would have taken an analyst hours. Now climate data is complex and there's a lot of metrics in this model. A good way to gain insights is to use a correlation matrix. This shows us how each metric positively or negatively correlates with another. We can show this at a given granularity, and in this case, correlation by country. As you can see in a few seconds, I'm able to get a lot of analytic value, and I don't have to be a data scientist to do so. Perhaps a particular cell in the correlation matrix catches my attention. To further explore the relationship between the metrics, I might use a scatter plot. In this case, showing CO2 emissions by percent of women in parliament seats and by the size of the country. In this chart, we're using average aggregation, which is okay, but might not give an accurate analysis. But better still, using OAC's built-in function library, we can simply compute a weighted average based on our population. This will give us more useful analyses, especially when aggregating by region. So now we can clearly see some of the patterns in the data. To gain more understanding, we can add a few simple analytics, such as trend lines, or even detecting outliers directly on the fly in the visualization itself. I can then select a group of outliers, or just some of them, and I can flip to exclude them from the chart to focus on the core average values. I can add more analytics of all kinds, such as reference lines or bands, and in this case I'll pick a one sigma band within the points that I selected in this visualization. If I select a sigma standard deviation, I can easily show what is falling outside of that band. And just like that, quick and easy data exploration is done. But for the full story in the data, I need to aggregate information perhaps by our region. So I'm not just looking at 250 countries all at once. So let's select year, CO2 emissions, and region and ask for the best fit visualization, another example of augmented analytics. Now OEC shows me the trend line with six regions, and of course I can show this geographically. We now have four linked data visualizations picturing different analytic views of the data set. The regions shown were included in the data set, but do they work? Is this regional split useful or can we find a better categorization using OAC? After I've done an initial exploration of the data, I can begin to compare regions in more depth. So let's take a closer look at population and GDP per capita for a more useful comparison. Here's a butterfly visualization with population on the right and GDP per capita on the left. We can immediately see that the regions are out of balance, with some having much larger populations and small GDP per capita, and vice versa. We could look at underlying trends using a line chart, but in this case, a scatter plot allows us to clearly see the change in GDP per capita and population over time. Based on this visual, I think we should create groupings that are more balanced by region. As with many analytic tasks, this turns out to be iterative. First, we used OAC's data prep functionality to create highly customizable groups by region, where China was treated as a region of its own, as were the countries in the Northern Hemisphere. This type of grouping is commonly used to mirror an organizational reporting structure, but it really didn't provide a better balance by region. For the second iteration, we used OAC's built-in machine learning capabilities to run a clustering model that was based on all the social metrics supplied in the dataset. 
By using machine learning, we've arrived at four clusters that are pretty well balanced in population, but still somewhat distributed by GDP per capita. No human would have clustered countries like this. So how did the machine learning do it? OAC provides visibility, as you can see here. Cluster 4, for example, which includes most of Europe and China, shares attributes like low fertility rates and high literacy. Using these machine learning derived clusters, we can now show the trend for a range of different metrics at once using a trellis of line charts. We see here, for instance, that some of these curves are crossing each other for different socially coherent regions, such as in availability of hospital beds per capita. Trends are very important to understand if we're doing better or worse environmentally, and anything to help people see the story in the data is valuable. Here's a customized visualization that adds a line to the scatter plot from earlier. With the dots lined up chronologically, the trend is more obvious. And of course, OAC can show values and labels if needed. To really make the data compelling through OAC, we can animate it using the custom visualization called a racing bar, which you may have seen online within our Oracle Analytics extensions library. Of our 200 countries, we've selected the top 15 countries by CO2 emissions. And you can see how consumption changes over time as the chart animates with the date in the lower right corner. This type of animated output is not only cool, but also helpful to people as human visual perception is well suited to seeing movement. In this analysis process, we're trying to understand how each metric evolves over time and how it might correlate with other metrics. This chart compares CO2 emissions on the y-axis with GDP growth rate on the x-axis. Let's add a line to the scatter plot and show the year. This is interesting because the time dynamic is not linear as we'd expect. We can see here that in some regions, the countries in one cluster have managed to increase GDP while also decreasing their CO2 emissions, perhaps as a result of increased use of renewable energy sources. Sadly, the opposite is also shown where regions have decreased GDP, but increased in how much CO2 they produce, which is not good. That's an interesting contrast for different regions, which would not have been noticed on a simple scatter plot. Well, here's an example of OAC using an API to supply additional contextual information. If I click on any country, I can see what their energy mix is, which in Congo's case is largely geared towards nuclear and renewables versus petroleum, natural gas, and coal. I'll be sure to share this insight to my senior environmental policymakers phone via the Oracle Analytics mobile app so that they can view it while they're on the go. This ability to surface content so directly helps decision makers better understand the data being analyzed. I'll now show how we prepare data for analysis in OAC. Creating a data set for analysis in OAC is as easy as creating the visualizations that we just showed. In this case, our data is stored in Oracle's autonomous data warehouse, but it can be stored in any number of supported repositories. Oracle Analytics has adapters for Hadoop, Spark, Snowflake, SAP HANA, Microsoft Azure, Google BigQuery, and Amazon Redshift, amongst others. So here's the table schema. OAC brings the tables in and discovers the joins. In this case, the system used an auto join where it uses the result of profiling to do the joins instead of needing consistent key column names. At the top of the columns, you can see data quality insights, giving us a head start of the validity of the data. The green to red scale across the top of the tile provides a visual cue. The profiler discovers more than just null values. Also, based on reference data, it identifies if a country code is valid, for example. Country values are 95% good, and we can take action to filter to see those that are not good and directly fix the values in line. Any manually entered values will then get reevaluated against the reference set. It's not just a case of fixing data, OAC can help enrich it too. The column containing country codes can be mapped against a preloaded reference data set. For example, we can add income group and median age. With this enrichment, we can bin and group country data quickly. Now we don't have to use the reference bins though as I can get OAC to bin the median age data automatically. And of course, we can specify how many bins we want and specify the ranges. Let's preview our changes and save in order to add our newly grouped age column of data. Finally, where nulls are identified, we can intervene to make the data more meaningful for later use. Say, changing null to unreported. Now we click OK, and the data set is ready. It's as easy as that. As you would expect, Oracle Analytics lets you schedule and deliver traditional reports to users as PDFs and emails. But many people want to get their analytics on the go. They want to adapt and get analytics whenever and wherever they want. This is the Oracle Analytics mobile app. When opening it, I'm shown my recommended feed. This lets me see things like what's trending this week, as well as what are people searching on this week, this month, or even all time. Based on my search history, it's also suggesting analytics that might be of interest to me. Here we can see that a coworker has shared an analytic card with me and made a comment on it. He's surprised that Congo is one of the top 10 countries in terms of renewable energy consumption as a percent of total. Interesting. If I wanted, I could reply and collaborate on this topic right here. All users have a personalized feed that they can manage themselves. 
Here are some things that I want to keep a close eye on and consult regularly. The way to add information to your feed is very simple. You go ahead and search for it. Show CO2 emissions by year and region as a stacked bar. OAC is smart enough to produce a range of analytics based on what I searched, which is a stacked bar organized by year on the x-axis and region on the y. This is lots of information for the last 25 years for each region. Now that's a lot of data to take in, so the system provides help when I hit the inside button on the top left. Doing so will generate a summary. We can see that, for example, the lowest recorded value in this time span was South Asia in 1994 and 93, and the highest recorded CO2 emissions value were in North America in 2000. I can share this information in a couple of different ways. I could share this with colleagues and comment like in the earlier example, or I can actually share through any app on my phone. So I could tweet this image, put a comment, and it'll automatically post to my personal Twitter account. Finally, I might want to interact with the data some more. I can filter by region. Maybe I want to see Europe and Latin America, or maybe just the top 70 years. I could then add this to my personal feed, and then it'll be there for me to look at and interact with later. Or I can schedule regular updates by telling the system to refresh this analytic and bring it to the top of the feed at a frequency that I decide upon. Even cooler is that I can ask to get an update of the analysis based on where I am. For example, perhaps bringing this information up automatically when I'm in a particular location or area. So now OAC, using my phone's geolocation, will automatically bring this information back when I'm in Paris. Lastly, you can ask OAC to keep scanning the data and alert you if something goes wrong or some threshold is exceeded. Here I'm requesting notifications in my feed whenever CO2 emissions increase by more than 4%. The alerts can be triggered by location and date range specifics too. Basically, you can set it and forget it. And the next time that you're in your For You feed, the lightning bolt and the map pointer icons will bring back the applied values and location updates that you care about for these analytic cards. In summary, Oracle Analytics has an intuitive mobile experience, providing voice-driven natural language interaction collaboration, and scheduling. And what this really means is decision makers can keep up to date with their key insights as, when, and where they're needed. So far, we've seen how Oracle Analytics can be used to prepare, analyze, and share findings easily, even automating parts of the process. But what about if we want to create a mobile app to share findings about climate data, but you're not a web developer? I'll show you how easy it is to do so using Oracle Visual Builder. First, we create a mobile application and call it Sustainability. I can now use a low-code visual experience to compose my app using analytics content. All I have to do is drag my analytics project into the placeholder and add the paths to point to it. It's just a case of doing some formatting to fit the content. And you can see that we very easily embedded a map view into my application, which has some options to allow me to tailor the view of the analytics visualization. I can do some sophisticated things, like taking advantage of the phone's geolocation in my app, in order to show CO2 emission data of where the person using the app is. Below the analytics tiles of the overall map and trend data, you'll see a button that says show emissions from my location. The default is set to Australia, but when the button is pressed, it triggers a chain of actions. First, it gets the phone's location, which is a built-in service of the Oracle Visual Builder. The Latin long coordinates returned are used calling a REST API that returns a country code. And the country code is used to filter the location. This chaining displays how powerful mobile apps can be built without using any code. Let's test our analytic web app to receive the climate data. So it looks good, and it's passing my location into Oracle Analytics as I'm based in the UK. To publish, this can be deployed as a progressive web app on mobile devices by simply scanning the QR code and then saving it to your device. Go ahead and give it a try. With Oracle Analytics and the OCI AI Vision service, you can go beyond what was possible before. As part of our organization's drive to sustainability, we're trying to understand how many of our staff drive to the office and what our CO2 footprint is. To do that, we've loaded hundreds of images of our own parking lot into Oracle Cloud. In Oracle Analytics, we can point to the location of these images and invoke Oracle's own AI object detection service in a data flow. We simply have to provide a few parameters, such as the image's URL and the image location, and we can run the data flow. And this generates a new data set in Oracle Analytics. And I can simply see, by hour of day, how many objects were recognized in all the pictures. I can even filter by the type of vehicle, such as trucks, cars, vans, and so on. And remember, these have been all automatically categorized by the AI under the hood. These are the number of vans and cars at different times of the day in our lot. If I switch to the visualization in OIC, I can interact with them via a bar chart. 
while seeing exactly the picture highlighting the different objects that were found by the AI service. And as you can see, I'm provided easy and quick integration of AI direct from Oracle Analytics Cloud. If you made it this far in the video, I'd like to thank you for watching our Oracle Analytics Bake Off demo submission for sustainability. To learn more about Oracle Analytics, I encourage you to head to oracle.com analytics. And to see how Oracle is embedding sustainability in our business and hopefully yours, head to oracle.com sustainability.